How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to talk about something that people ask me on my mega assembly video. The reason one that I just did is what do I do if I don't have a completely flat terrain like I had on that Mars scape, which I do have some slopes. I just didn't show them, um, but I just wanted to address that. And doing that, we're going to look at the sculpting tools that are in Unreal Engine. Now we're going to do that with the terrain portion, but we're also going to do it with the mega scans. So make sure you stick all the way till the end of the video for that. And uh, let's get started. All right, now just to show you what we have in the beginning, we do have some slopes here, uh, but let's just start from scratch because that's what we usually do. So I'm just going to delete this. By the way, if you have never used the modeling tools or if you're new to this, I highly recommend that you watch my previous video about the mega assemblies and the modeling tools. It's going to be in the description down below. And it's really important because some of the things that I mentioned there, I'm not going to go over here again. Otherwise, this video is going to be really long. So let's just get started. I'm going to put down a rectangle. And this is a very, very small rectangle. So what I'm going to do is, again, just add some values here and there real quick. And you can see what kind of values I'm adding if you want to follow along through so 32 by 32. Uh, but again, if you want an explanation as to what I'm doing, just watch that other video. So I just laid that down, complete. And what we're going to do is we're going to be adding uh, one of our mega scans here. Let's do this one. Just going to throw this one in here. And one of the things that I always advocate is that you have a character on screen. And the reason for that is because if you don't have a character on screen, then how are you going to know scale? And when you're using the mega scan materials here, the scale is very important because look how big everything looks from this uh, windswept sand. And these rocks are supposed to be like tiny pebbles and look how gigantic they look. Not only that, but everything looks uh, overly pixelated. So always have your character there for uh, scale purposes. And I'm just going to throw in this one that I already tiled. So if I go here, double click, you can see that it's tiled 10 by 10. And that gets me a little bit more decent looking sand because again, these are very small pebbles. Let me just bring this up so the grid's not in the way. But yeah, just make sure that your uh, mannequin is in there for scale purposes. And always do duplicate of your main material. It's just easier to come back to default values if you uh, changed a lot of things. All right, now with that out of the way, let's do some displacement real quick. So displace, um, that looks crazy. I'm just gonna do texture 2D. Let's do this one right here. Just gonna displace it like that, blue channel. And one of the things that I didn't do last time is mess with the UV scale. Now, the reason why you want to change the UV scale is because we already tiled this 10 times. So if you don't change the UV scale, then your displacement would be off because the displacement is thinking this whole rectangle that we just laid down is one tile. So we have to tell it that we're tiling the texture 10 by 10. So you do that here on the UV scale. There you go. And displace intensity, let's do 18. A little bit more display subdivisions in this case because it's so big i like to do a lot of subdivisions just so we get some nice resolution in there and you can see the displacement happening here I'm just gonna click accept and there you go we have our terrain generated uh there's a little bit of displacement here you can see it on the wireframe mode and everything is a little bit crazy here so what i'm gonna do is um, so you can see things better. Just right click visibility, show only selected, go to wireframe and you can see that there is indeed some displacement here. And that's a uh, handy tool when you're doing this kind of stuff, just right click visibility, just change that. So I'm going to do visibility, show all actors, go back to lit mode and we're good to go. Now what I'm going to talk about now is the sculpting tools they are here on the deform tab of the modeling portion of unreal engine they are in the same place pretty much where you can find displacement now 
there are two sculpting brushes. I'm going to talk about both of them, but you're only going to use one. The reason for that is because this one right here will make some major changes that you don't want to see. So we're going to use V sculpt, but let me tell you about this sculpt. If you have used ZBrush or you sculpted in Blender, then you know what dynamic mesh is. That's a tool tip that's coming up, says dynamic mesh sculpting. And dynamic mesh sculpting, what it does is it creates geometry as you sculpt, which sometimes is good. But in this case, it can be detrimented because we already displaced this geometry. We already added a texture. And if we add new geometry, that's going to mess the UVs. There's going to be some stretching. We don't want that to happen. We're going to have to re UV the whole thing, which you can do if you want to, but that's not part of this tutorial. So just so you know, you're not going to click on this one. You're going to click on V sculpt. So we're going to click there. And once you do that, you're going to see that your rectangle turns into uh, black and white uh, and it kind of shows you where the polygons are once you accept your sculpt this is going to go back to the smooth portion of how it was before nice displacement so don't worry if you see jagged polygons here they're not going to transfer now let's look at the tab here with the parameters we have size which is uh, very obviously the size of your brush you can use this lighter or do what i'm doing which is pressing the open and close brackets on my keyboard to change the size. Now, after that, I leave everything on default. Uh, I don't like to mess with this because they didn't give me good results. But then we go to the sculpting tab where your brushes are located. Yes, you do have some brushes here that you can select. In this case, we have sculpt normals. That's, for, uh, that's what sculpt n means. It means it will push your normals or your polygons upwards. But this is not good for what we're trying to do. If we're trying to create slopes, we need something a little bit more subtle. This sculpt and it's kind of like your sculpt landscape. So if you press, it will just instantly go up and it can cause some stretching. So I want to change this. Click here. I want to change that to move. You can see that you have a ton of other brushes that you want to use. Uh, just experiment with those. But I'm going to use move so we can just do subtle changes and we can do some slopes here. I'm just going to click there and you're going to see that everything changed uh, underneath that. Uh, I'm sorry. Before we do that, there's the smooth brush here. This is activated by holding down the shift key and clicking. Do not use this if you already have a displaced terrain. The reason for that is because that's just going to smooth your geometry and it's going to get rid of your displacement. So don't do that. Now over here, we do have the strength. If you want to change that, I believe the strength of one is fine for what we're doing. The fall off is how soft your brush is. So if you want a more of a hard kind of brush, which I don't recommend, you can move this um, further. Everything else I leave as it is. I don't make any changes. Um, I mostly just change the size of the brush. So let's get to a little bit of sculpting here. i make a bigger brush. Just bring this up and let's just do it here as well. You can bring it up or down, it's your decision. And uh, let's just bring things up so we envelop this old mega skin right here. So I'm gonna make it smaller. I'm gonna bring this up and that way we don't have to rotate the mega skin. And this is a cool exercise if you are designing your environment, you can actually sculpt around the mega scan as opposed to adding the mega scans after the fact. But I'm also going to show you later down the video how to actually sculpt the mega scans. So there you go. Let me sculpt a little bit more so I can hide these. And as you can see, my brush is on top of the mega scans, but I'm still sculpting the rectangle that's underneath. So you don't have to worry about that. It's always on the main terrain portion that you selected. Okay, I think we're good. Maybe a little bit more around here. Excellent. All right, so once you click accept, you're gonna see that it goes back and we have nice slopey terrain that is still displaced. We I think there's good sand accumulation here. Those were some happy accidents there. But this is how you can change your flat rectangle 
to be a little bit more slopey if you want slopes on your terrain. One of the things that I would recommend is if you're doing an open terrain like I did on my Mars level, I suggest you still use landscape as your base because uh, creating a whole level with just rectangles can be a bit of a pain. I'm not saying it cannot be done, but it it is just painful. So once you have your slopes determined with your landscape, then you can bring in a rectangle and sculpt around it. And that is it. And you get some uh, nice terrain all around. All right, now what I promised in the beginning, let's uh, sculpt some mega scans. So I'm going to, let's see which one of these we're gonna choose. Let's choose one of this, all right. Okay, so let me put it somewhere where it's kind of like floating. Okay, let's just look at it this way. So let's say we have our mega skin here, it's right on top of the floor, but it's still kind of floaty. You still see the edges and you don't want to just bring it down through the floor. So you just want to get rid of the edges. A good way to do that is by using sculpting and you can sculpt mega scans that are already nanite. So we just go back to our friend of vSculpt. And this is gonna take a little bit longer sometimes because it's a nanite mesh with a ton of resolution. So um, just depending on what kind of computer you have. Now I'm going to already have my move brush. Just increase the size of that brush a little bit. I'm just gonna move things subtly so they go through the floor. And again, that way you get that edge of the mega scan just going through the floor as opposed to having to bring down the whole mesh. Cause I know sometimes you just, hey, I have I wanna have this uh, pile of rock here, but if I make it if I push it through the floor, then it's no longer gonna look like a pile of rocks. So this is a good way and you can just push it. Now you have to thread lightly whenever you're using uh, mega scans because if you push them too far from their original shape, they're going to start distorting and the textures are going to start looking awful. So there you go. Gonna click accept. This is gonna take a little bit, so I'll be right back. And as you can see, our mega scan is still looking nice and good. It's just going through the floor like we want. And we can do the same thing with this mega scan that the border is kind of sticking out. Let's go to vSculpt. And I'm gonna bring it down, down, down. Should reduce my camera speed. There you go. Just getting rid of that ugly edge. And it's cool, you can see how high res the mega scans are when you're doing the nanite feature. There you go, click accept. And now we don't have any ugly edges, we just have a pile of rocks that's coming out of our sand and everything is looking nice and dandy. There is a little bit of distortion around here, but it's very subtle unless you get too close. So again, you have to be careful whenever you're sculpting a mega scans because too many changes uh, in the geometry will distort the texture. Before we finish this video, I just want to say thanks to everybody who watched, likes, comments, subscribe. Very special thanks to all my patrons. And as always, as a shout out to my level two patrons here on screen. Um, if you're level two, you also get early access. If you can't do the Patreon, then just leaving a like, leaving a comment for the YouTube algorithm works as well. Now, a thing about the Discord, you probably haven't seen me posting a lot on Discord. And that is because I'm currently developing the, the short film and I'm posting updates on my other social media. I want the Discord to remain something for the community, something for you guys to showcase your stuff. So it's not all about me. So if you wanna see the updates of the short film, then you can follow me on Instagram or Twitter. If you don't like those social media, I'm still posting updates on the channel in the community section if you want to check that out. But I will still be hanging around the Discord to answer all your questions, so make sure if you have any uh, issues or any problems with Unreal Engine, just come by. We are a community of over a thousand people on the server. And with that said, um, that is it. I'll see you in the next video.